Welcome back to another EA Sports College Football 25 video. In this video, we're going to be going over the EA Sports College Football 25 Dynasty Deep Dive blog post. In this video, we'll be covering the topics of coach progression and building your staff. Enjoy the video. When we were in the early stages of designing Dynasty Mode, we talked with members of the community, college football experts, read hundreds of blog posts and tweets, and watched countless wish, wish list videos. We knew how important Dynasty was to our community, and we heard loud and clear that our players wanted deep experience that is representative of the current college football landscape, where roster management and talent acquisition are at the forefront of successful programs. Uh, it looks like they anchored this experience within three core pillars, build your coach, build your program, and deliver deliver the world of college football. You can see here uh, the three different aspects. With Build Your Coach, this encompasses the decisions you make on your coaching journey to the top of the college football world. Whether that's starting as a coordinator at a small school and making a name for yourself before getting that first head coaching job, or starting as a head coach at your dream school. Every decision you make on your journey matters. Based on the video, it looks like this is gonna be a really cool portion of like building uh, your coach and like having a certain style and then either balancing that style or kind of going into that style more uh, deeply with like having your coaches bounce off of you instead of like balance you. I think this is gonna be a really cool way to build different types of dynasties. Like I love doing recruiting and trusting that my actual skill in the game will get me through it without having the boost from the uh, other coaches or whatever. Whatever, or like the other parts of the coaching tree like in the old game um, so I'm interested to see how those coaching styles really affect gameplay uh, the second section here is the build your program um, as the old saying goes to win in college football it's not the X's and O's it's the Jimmy's and Joe's recruiting is the lifeblood of college football and having a consistent winner means you need a roster that is built to reload rather than rebuild that all starts on the high school recruiting trail but in modern college football roster retention and utilizing the the transfer portal are instrumental in your ability to field a championship team. The great thing about this is that it seems like they put a lot of time and effort into the recruiting and the transfer portal process so that we can begin to see the in-depth, the the in-depth process it takes to going into doing recruiting while not making it a tedious and like overly time consuming process. It looks pretty simple. It looks like each recruit will take two or three button clicks per week, which is like not a lot of time at all. And once you get into the menus and stuff, once you get into the menus and stuff, I think this will be an incredibly easy like process to get into and to go through with. Um, the, the final section of this is deliver the world of college football. Um, a lot has changed in college football over the last year, let alone the past 11 years. From the new 12-team college football playoff to conference realignment, we set out to create the ever-changing world of college football within Dynasty and provide you with the tools to customize your experience. Um, it looks like the, um, you know, there's a big focus on being able to customize the different uh, conferences, uh, going in and, you know, firing coaches, having control of that, making sure that the teams look really cool, the stadiums seem really cool the fans and the stadiums look really good all that sort of thing to bring in a really good experience that you have control of obviously um i think they're bringing back some of those uh customizable things because we don't have the ability to customize players uh like we used to and um i think they're giving us some of these other things as like a like a token of like we're sorry about the nil stuff here's more stuff you can do Underlying these three core pillars was a singular motto from the uh, EA team, which is satisfy the core community because this is their game. And I agree with this. This is our game. And one thing that I think EA has gotten wrong in so many of the games that they've released recently, whether it be FC24 or Madden, um, it, I think that they have seen these as profit machines, which is understandable. We live in a capitalist society. It's their prerogative to make money and satisfy their shareholders but we pay for this game we spend time in this game and we have like so much attachment to this game and the fact that they're mentioning this in uh in one of these big blogs is really important to me and i think it's important to the community i'm just hoping that it's not lip service um but even the fact that they're mentioning it and being transparent about it is a completely different 
uh, experience than what folks who are in FC24 and Madden are getting. It's like it's like talking to a brick wall um, and speaking into the void with those other those other games. So if we go underneath the Build Your Coach uh, section, um, you can see uh, that your journey to the top of college football world starts with your coach. We wanted this to be meaningful and allow you to experience the coaching journey that no other sport can provide. We met with college football coaches and experts and started breaking down real life coaches on the whiteboard. What was their identity? What made them great? What was their journey to get where they are today? And what they found was bo that both current and former coaches broadly fit into three main categories. Some are incredible recruiters, while others are motivators who maximize the potential of their players. And lastly, tacticians outscheme their opponent on field with X's and O's. And you can kind of see this with, um, for instance, um, Lane Kiffin is, is an incredible recruiter. He gets really good guys to come in um, and, and can talk a player who was going to go to USC, which I guess he coached there too, but who was going to go to Bama and get them to come to Ole Miss and like have them be a part of his team and his thing. Um, and then you have coaches like, then you have the tactician guys who have like their playbook that they run, which a bad example, but it worked when it worked was like Gus Malzahn and his like window dressing, lots of RPO, lots of screen passes, lots of like you know, the high school playbook that he had, or like Chip Kelly with Oregon with his thing, or Mike Leach with his air raid offense. You have those guys who are incredibly good tacticians, or even you can say someone like um, someone like uh, Bill Belichick, which is like obviously NFL, but those types of coaches. And then you have your motivators. So then you, you have your motivator type coaches, which is like your Mike Gundy's or even your Kirby Smarts. I think Kirby's a combination of a few of these, but those type of coaches kind of really fit within those molds. Um, there were also a number of coaches who were more of a hybrid between two categories, kind of like I just mentioned. Uh, but for example, there were coaches who were both great at recruiting and X's and O's. After breaking down hundreds of coaches, two things were loud and clear. No coach was great at everything, and there's no single path to being a great coach. What about the greatest coaches of all times? Even they weren't great at everything and needed their coordinators. Let's look back to 2013. Alabama's offense had fallen behind. The world of college football offenses was changing and it was changing quickly. They had to pivot and change their entire philosophy, bringing in an offensive guru that transformed the Alabama offense and put the program on an entirely new trajectory. Six of the next eight national championships while creating multiple first round drafted quarterbacks. All of our research and discussions led us to build a coach experience centered around three goals. Just like the real world, no coach could be great at everything. There'd be a rock, paper, scissors sort of relationship between the coach types with no dominant progression path. Coordinators and how you build your staff matter. The next thing we're going to talk about is coach progression. Uh, progressing your coach starts with playing games. As you play, you'll complete coach goals that award XP. This isn't really any different from any of the previous games. Um, it's, it's something we should all be familiar with. Once you earn enough XP, you'll level up your coach to a maximum level of 50 and be awarded coach points. Coach points can be used to upgrade your coach's abilities. More on that later. There are four coach XP goal categories that can be single game, weekly, season, or career goal. Draft. Pro draft goals based on which round your player is drafted in. For example, player drafted in the first round. Game. Individual game goals that range from a single play result like interception, rushing touchdown, to a full game result. For example, beat your rival, beat a top 25 team, win a national championship. Recruiting. Determined by your success on the recruiting trail, recruiting goals can be specific to a single prospect. For example, sign a five-star prospect or a full season, like sign the best recruiting class in the country. Stats. Weekly goals like ranked in the top 10, season stat goals, for example, 4,000 team passing yards, and ranked top five in offensive yards, and career goals like win five national championships. The number of times you've completed a goal and your progress towards goal completion can be viewed in the Coach XP goal screen, which can be accessed via the Coach tab in the Dynasty Hub. We've also added five progression speed settings so you can modify how fast coaches progress in your dynasty. <clears throat> I like that there's a place where you can go see where you've achieved these results and that there's kind of like a hub for all of your coach XP and like how many times you've gotten a fumble recovery, first downs, and you can actually probably look at that and you can actually look at that and see where you can improve your style of play, the players that you have, like if you just have tons of, you know, 
tons of tackles, but you don't have a ton of interceptions. Maybe you did, need to increase your um, coverage corners or coverage linebackers or whatever just to like improve that area. That's like getting into the weeds with that. But anyways, so you can see here the different areas, your draft goals, your game goals, recruiting goals, and stat goals. And you can see those across um, across the board with your coach. Um, that'll be useful to keep track of like what you need to work on essentially or what you've already done. Um, each time you complete a goal in game, you'll receive a notification in the top left corner of the screen. The notification will describe uh, the completed goal and the XP reward. You can see that uh, here. Um, after completing a game or advancing the week, you'll receive an XP summary screen showing your progression to the next level. Um, here you can see the XP is about halfway between 37 and 38. This is similar to the um, to the little screen that you would have gotten on the old ones. I like that they like made it a little bit more pretty than just like the, the little box that came up. Um, I wish it was still um, I wish it still showed like the itemized like XP that you got throughout the week. Um, I'm curious if that'll show up. Uh, uh, but it doesn't look like it will. Coach archetypes. Um, in EA Sports College Football 25, we're introducing a new archetype-based coach ability system. You can think of this similar to your traditional RPG classes where all of your party members have a specific class, archetype, and role. Holy cow, bringing in D&D into college football. Ultimately, in order for your team to be successful, all of the players in your party must do, your, do their job and work together. Their system is no different. All coaches will start with a base class or coach archetype, uh, which can be thought of as your special ability in a traditional RPG. Just like our real life coaches, the base archetypes fall into three categories. Recruiting, motivation, think player development and program culture, and scheme, on-field X's and O's. From your base archetype, you can progress in multiple ways. You can become an expert in a single category like recruiting, where you become an elite recruiter and excel on the recruiting trail. Alternatively, you can become a hybrid coach who is strong in multiple areas. For example, a talent developer who is great at both talent acquisition, which would be recruiting, and player development, motivation. The ultimate goal is to become a program builder or CEO atop the world of college football. Achieving an elite archetype like program builder or CEO is a combination of on field success and ability progression. There's no single formula to reach these statuses. You'll be able to mix and match different ability combinations and progression paths, leading to strong customization. In total, there are 11 different archetypes, each with their own focuses and perks. Together, they form a rock, paper, scissors relationship where there's no dominant archetype. While there is no doubt that talent acquisition is the most important thing in college football, focusing solely on recruiting could leave you vulnerable in other areas. Remember, no coach can be great at everything. Every decision you make on your coaching journey matters. Once you purchase an ability, there's no going back as you will not be able to respect your coach. I am the worst at this in regards to like having uh, weaknesses in my game. I tend to focus on recruiting um, and having recruiting be like one of the bigger areas that I focus on and just praying that I have good offensive and defensive coordinators. I like that they've given us more control and the ability to like hire and fire um, coordinators, which can help to like mitigate some of my weaknesses, ideally. Um, but I also don't like that you can't respec because at the end of every season in the old game, you could respec, um, but I guess they're trying to have you like dive into a certain type. How do I upgrade my archetype and what does it do? This is going through coach progression and the coaching uh, skill tree. Each archetype has a set of prerequisites and objectives that must be completed in order to purchase them. For example, in order to become an elite recruiter, you must spend 50 coach points in the recruiter archetype and sign two top five recruiting classes. Once these goals are complete, the archetype becomes available for purchase with coach points. When creating your coach, you'll select which base archetype you want to start with. The other two base archetypes will then be available for purchase with coach points without the need to meet any additional requirements. Okay, so you can like round out yourself as you go up. Purchasing an archetype with coach points unlocks new sets of abilities, as well as new opportunities in the coaching carousel. More on that later. Additionally, each archetype has a perk when it is active. For example, Tactician has the winner perk, which awards additional coach XP every time you win a game. Love that. <clears throat> 
Oh, but not player XP. Maybe, I don't know. If you own the program builder or CEO archetypes, they will always be your active archetype regardless of how many coach points you've spent in other archetypes. If you do not own these archetypes, your active archetype is the archetype you have spent the most coach points in. All owned coach abilities are always on regardless of which archetype is currently active. So it looks like you'll have like a primary archetype that is supported by um, other perks, but your like active perk um, is going to be whatever your main active archetype is. Your progress can be viewed in the coach ability screen, which is accessible from the coach tab of the Dynasty Hub. Within the screen, you can see all the available archetypes, their unlocks, requirements, and perks, and your overall progression into each archetype. As you spend coach points in each archetype, the spider graph in the center of the screen will morph and change to show your coach's DNA. So you can see here um, for Michael Mueller, he's a CEO, I guess that he progressed all the way to the top of that. Um, but you can see that he leans toward tactician, I guess, and then has some motivator as well. How do the abilities work? Once you own an archetype, you can purchase the abilities within that archetype using coach points. In College Football 25, we are introducing more than 50 coach abilities. Each ability can have up to four tiers and every tier has a purchase cost associated with it. Every archetype with the exception of Scheme Guru, Program Builder, and CEO has their abilities broken down by position group. This increases the level of depth and specialization each coach has. No longer is a coach great at recruiting across the board. Now coaches will specialize in specific position groups. No! <laughs> Making your staff composition that much more important. Are you a quarterback whisperer? Are you great in the trenches and committed to the no fly zone? How does your staff compliment you? I'm kind of bummed that they like removed that because like that was something that I was like really big at being good at was like recruiting across the board. Um, so I guess I'm going to have to think about who to bring in to like complement my abilities in that and decide what sort of program I want to have. Um, I definitely love uh, high interception defenses, like big time uh, flash plays, uh, big play defenses, and then having uh, quarterbacks that grow and progress and do well. Um, but I also love a good downhill running game. We're just gonna have to make decisions. We're, we're gonna get there. Um, in addition to position-based boosts, there are coach abilities with core gameplay effects so you can really cook. For example, the Scheme Guru archetype focuses on your gameplay style. If you're a coach that likes to play fast, you can upgrade the fast tempo offense, providing you with the following boost. Battery pack, tier one. Offensive players fatigue slower and hurry up. Halt napping, tier two. Um, increase delay to Increase delay to defenders looking to the sideline at the snap. On their heels, tier three, team composure boost for first downs gained while running hurry up. That's cool. Uh, tipped your hand, chance to see the defensive coverage shell in hurry up. That's cool. Um, you can also make your team a well-oiled machine who doesn't work against themselves and is unfazed by rowdy home field crowds by upgrading the discipline slash communication ability. On offense, this provides hater blockers, tier one, sight reduction and crowd noise impact on the road. Teflon, tier two, significant reduction of crowd noise impact on the road. Polish, tier three, offensive players will commit slightly fewer penalties. Clean sheet offense, tier four, offensive players will commit significantly fewer penalties. Of course, balance is critically important here, so there are defensive counters to all the offensive playstyle abilities. Is your defense looking a little sus, or are you tired of getting punched in the mouth by a physical ground and pound team? Upgrade your ground and pound defense to become a stout run defense and reduce the effects of physical offense continuously running the football. The program builder and CEO archetypes are different in that they are only available to head coaches. The abilities within them are diverse and range from roster management and program culture to home field advantage and recruiting pipeline boots. So you can see in the running game, you've got the, looking at some of the different like abilities within these, you've got like advanced look, running backs take less time to fully scout. This is like the recruiter archetype. Um, most influential running back, um, recruiting actions give a bonus to running backs, increase weekly recruiting hours for running backs, always be crew. And then you've got magnetic personality, increased starting interest from running backs. So these start to give you, one, they give you boosts weekly and in your actions, but also start by giving you boosts before the season starts in recruiting of that category. What about coordinators? Both coordinators and head coaches have the same set of abilities and archetypes available to them, leading to a natural progression from coordinator to head coach and increased importance on staff management where your coordinators either complement your strengths or shore up your deficiencies. 
Remember, no coach can be great at everything, so it is critical that your coordinators complement you. All of the abilities your coaching staff own stack together, increasing the effect of an ability. Abilities owned by the head coach have the greatest impact. The impact of uh, coordinator-owned abilities depends on whether or not the ability is related to their side of the ball. For example, a defensive coordinator having the quarterback Icy Veins ability, which boosts your quarterback's composure at the beginning of the game, will have a much smaller effect than an offensive coordinator owning it. I like that they're bringing in these, like, abilities that kind of work together it really is bringing in kind of the rpg element that we always wanted in the dynasty mode and that i loved about it your, your coordinators will automatically progress their archetypes and abilities you will not be able to control which abilities they purchase nor will you be able to respect your coordinators abilities this adds even more importance to how you progress your coach and manage your staff in the coaching carousel this adds a whole new layer of like okay i'm going down the quarterback tree now this guy's going down the quarterback tree but i actually wanted him to focus on wide receivers and he picks whatever he wants and then he gets hired as a as a head coach and now you have to restart um with a whole new coordinator depending on who you hire and how you hire when you hire those sorts of things um you can view the abilities of your coordinators um from within the coach ability screen by tabbing left and right um uh, with like the left bumper right bumper l1 r1 each coach will have a unique spider graph based on the abilities and archetypes that they own pressing r3 will overlay all three coaches spider graphs so you can easily see where your staff is deficient that's hugely important i think it'll be good especially as like the head coach to be able to see like okay this guy is a great motivator and will be good at like getting XP for my team. I need a little bit more support in the recruiting area. So let's see where we can add to uh, that level of depth. Climbing the coaching ladder. Your journey starts when you sign your first coach contract. When creating your dynasty, you'll have the option to select whether you want to be a head coach, offensive coordinator, or defensive coordinator. Coordinators have performance expectations just like head coaches. All the roles will have full control of recruiting and be able to play both sides of the ball during gameplay. Sign here, please. Every time you start a new coaching job, you'll be asked to sign a contract with that school. The contract will have a set contract length and performance expectation. Just like in real life, failure to meet those expectations will result in bad things happening. School expectations are determined by the school's current team prestige and program standing. The better the school, the higher the expectations. And there are four types of contract expectations. Win X amount of games, win a conference championship, make the college playoff, win a national championship. Your job security will fluctuate throughout the season based on the results of your games and whether or not you are trending towards meeting your current contract expectations. The further you are from meeting your expectations, the bigger your job security will be hit. If your job security gets too low, you'll end up on the hot seat, and if your seat gets too hot, you'll be fired and have to look for a new job in the coaching carousel. Alternatively, meeting or exceeding your goal will result in increased job security. Of course, if you don't like the possibility of being fired, you can always turn off uh, user coach firing in your dynasty setting. I personally won't be doing this. I kind of like the challenge, um, but we might do that for the online dynasty. I don't know. We'll see. Um, job security is a function of your ability to meet your contract expectations. Every win and loss counts towards that expectation. With that being said, not all wins and losses are created equal. Beating a higher ranked team will have a larger impact than beating one of the generic FCS teams. Similarly, losing to a generic FCS team is not a good look. Enter Michigan to the chat. All coaches have a coach prestige letter grade that ranges from A plus to F. Coach prestige is reflective of your ability to meet contract expectations adjusted for the school and the role that you have. For example, meeting expectations and winning five games at a small school will have a significantly smaller impact than winning the SEC championship at a traditional powerhouse school. At the end of your contract, the school will evaluate whether or not they want to extend your contract based on your performance. If you're offered an extension, you'll be notified that the school has decided to extend your contract and it will be automatically accepted. Don't worry, automatic acceptance of contract extensions does not mean that you are unable to change jobs. You can leave for a new job via the coaching carousel at any point in your contract, regardless of your current contract status. We auto accept extensions to protect you from inadvertently changing jobs if you send past a contract extension offer without interacting with it. Your current coach contract and job security status can be accessed from the coach tab of the Dynasty Hub. 
When viewing your contract, you can see your current and past season job security, contract expectation, and your school's season by season results for the last 20 years. The season by season results show the team's record, if they were a conference champion, and any bowl games they won in that season. When signing your contract, you'll have the opportunity to look at the last 20 years and see the kind of program you're taking over. Of course, your program's history will continue to update over time as you play your dynasty. Coach Carousel. Following the 2021-2022 college football regular season, two high-profile schools in LSU and USC were looking for new coaches. Both schools did what nobody saw coming and hired elite coaches from other high-profile schools. Suddenly, other high-profile jobs were unexpectedly available, and the coaching carousel was in full effect. In College Football 25, we set out to recreate the chaos that is the college football coaching carousel, along with the domino effect that it brings. Now, instead of happening over a single week, the coaching carousel takes place over the course of five weeks from the conference championship week to the end of the bowl season, just like the real world. Additionally, the carousel is now an asynchronous experience where each user can evaluate their offers without the need to wait on someone else. That way, in your multi-user online dynasty, the entire carousel experience won't be held up because you're sitting around waiting for your friend to get on and evaluate their job offer only for them to tell you that they want to stay at their current job. Yeah, that would be annoying to like go through that and have those people either not accept offers or like trick you into accepting an offer that like ends up biting you in the butt later. Um, but how does the coach carousel work? The carousel kicks off during conference championship week. During this week, all coaches contracts are preceded and schools determine if they want to fire, extend, or let a coach's contract expire. If your school's decided to fire or extend you, you'll receive an action item notifying you of the news. If you're the head coach, you'll be able to fire your coordinators during this week. More on that later. Once you advance the week and arrive in bowl season, the first round of job offers go out. If you received any job offers, you'll be notified via an action item titled View Job Offers. If you did not receive any offers, you'll have a generic action item titled Coach Carousel. Pressing the action item will take you to the Coach Carousel screen where you can view any job offers you have, as well as all the open jobs around the country. Just because you didn't receive any offers in the first week of the bowl season, or if you didn't like the offers you received, it doesn't mean your carousel experience is over. Remember, the coach carousel takes place over multiple weeks. The first week of bowl season is just the beginning. As schools hire and poach coaches from other schools, their previous jobs will become available as an unexpected job opening and the schools will look to hire a replacement the following week. When viewing a job offer, you will see the school's new coach preference, what happened to their previous coach, and who the top candidates for the job are. You'll also see the contract they're offering you and what contract expectations are. Once you accept an offer, you will stay with your current school until after the national championship game, which is when all the job changes are processed. This allows you to take one last ride with your current team and coach any bowl games they play in. That's cool that they don't move you on until after the bowl game, but some coaches just leave before the bowl game, but that's a whole other thing. There'll be a countdown in the top right corner of the Dynasty Hub informing you how many weeks are remaining until you change jobs. Um, so if you accept the head coach position, you'll be able to manage your staff and hire coordinators at your new school during the rest of the carousel period. If you were fired or your contract expired and you do not accept a new job before the end of the carousel, you'll be automatically placed on a new team after the national championship game. That's good that they don't just like end the career there like in Madden. Like Madden, your coach has to like retire if he doesn't get picked up. Um, but there's also like 32 teams in the NFL compared to 134. How do schools determine who they want to hire? Each school has a school persona, which determines what they are looking for um, in their next coach. Schools will evaluate candidates across the following criteria. Their level, the higher a coach's level, the more powerful they are and the more abilities they have. Schools are always looking for the highest caliber coach they can find. Scheme. Certain schools, like the military academies, want a coach who runs a specific style of offense or defense. Archetype. Schools have a preference on the type of coach they're looking to hire. Archetype. Schools have a preference on the type of coach they're looking to hire. Just like the real world, Blue Bloods prefer elite coaches who are a program builder or CEO. Pipeline. All coaches have a primary pipeline which provides a boost in recruiting. This is meant to simulate an area of the country where they have strong ties and relationships in recruiting. Schools prefer coaches whose primary pipeline is the same as one of the school's recruiting pipeline. 
Coach Prestige. A coach's prestige is compared against the school's team prestige. A five-star program is not going to hire a coach who is mid and only a C-minus coach prestige. Together, these form an overall school fit score, which is then used to generate a list of candidates for the job. The school will then extend an offer to one of these coaches. Game Theory and the Domino Effect. It is important to keep in mind the domino effect when you're evaluating whether or not to accept an offer. Just because a job isn't open today doesn't mean it won't be available next week. You can view all of the current job openings by using the All Openings filter in the Coach Carousel screen. Every open job will list out the top candidates the school is targeting. Once the week is advanced, one of these three candidates will leave their current job and accept the open job. This allows you to predict which jobs may become available next week. You can also view all of the coach movements across the college football world in the Staff Moves screen. The Staff Moves screen can be accessed via the Staff Moves action item in the Dynasty Hub. Staff Moves show all of the coaches who change jobs, their former and new team, and the reason for leaving. Managing your staff. As a head coach, you will now have the opportunity to manage your staff and hire slash fire your coordinators. Remember, our coach archetype system does not allow you to be great at everything, making who you surround yourself with that much more important. Staff management is your opportunity to build your staff the way you want in an effort to put yourself in the best position to succeed as a program. You fire. Managing your staff starts during conference championship week. During this week, you'll be able to fire your coordinators. Be careful because this is the only week you can do this. After this week, you're unable to replace a coordinator unless they are hired away to another school. Your coordinators will not leave unless you fire them or they are hired by another school. Every coordinator has a standard to your contract. Once their contract expires, it will be automatically renewed for another two years. Of course, if you don't like them, you can always tell them they're fired. If your coordinator has one year or less remaining on their current contract, there's a chance they will be poached and leave for another school. If this happens during the carousel, you'll have the opportunity to hire a replacement. Welcome to the team. Starting bowl week one, you can hire new coordinators if you have an open position. When you go to hire a new coordinator, you'll be presented with a curated list of candidates. These coaches are chosen for you based on the needs of your school. The logic that is used to determine the list is similar to the AI school logic to determine their top candidate. When looking at a candidate, you'll be able to see their current school, active archetype, coach level, and what schools are interested in them. These are the schools you would be competing with if you made them a job offer. You can also view the coach's talent tree so you can drill down more deeply and see whether or not they'd be a good fit with your staff. When you make an offer to a coach, it's not guaranteed that they'll accept it. You can only offer one coach per position each week, and once you have offered them, they will appear in your staff management screen with an offer tag. When you advance the week and re-enter the screen, you'll find out whether or not they accept your offer. If they did, they'll join your program after the national championship game when we process all coach moves. If they rejected your offer, you will have the opportunity to offer another coach. You will always have at least one coach available to hire who does not require you to compete with another school. If at the end of the carousel, you've not been able to fill an open position, you will automatically be given a new coordinator that is on par with the caliber of your program. Thank you so much for watching this video on the EA Sports College Football 25 Dynasty Deep Dive covering coach progression and building your staff. Next up, we'll be covering the recruiting and player progression section of it. In the final one, we'll be covering the customization and basic Dynasty setup that they had in the blog. Thank y'all so much for tuning into this video. I appreciate it so much. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more in the future, subscribe to the channel down below. Get into the comments and let me know what Dynasty you're going to start using. I've been Alfred Avenue. See ya!